Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about Lissajus or Lissajus curves. In this video, I will discuss general techniques of interpreting Lissajus curves to visualize mid and side information, stereo width, peak and RMS, distortion, and limiting. Now to start things off, you might be asking yourself, what is a Lissajus curve? It is actually the graph of a system of parametric equations which describe complex harmonic motion. I know it seems like a lot, but we're going to break it down a little bit to its elements and then figure out how they relate to audio. So first things first, let's start with an oscilloscope, a tool that we would usually use for electrical engineering, for testing equipment. You'll be looking at something like this, um, where it'll graph voltage in relation to time. You'll notice over here, we have two voltages, in this case, the right channel and the left channel. Time is on the x-axis and the amplitude of that signal or the voltage on the y-axis. Now you'll notice that these two signals, that they are in phase, they are working together. In order to view these voltages as a Lissajous curve, we need to change our oscilloscope's display from voltage over time to x-y mode, where we have one voltage on the x-axis and another voltage on the y-axis. When they are in phase, as voltage one goes up, so does voltage two, resulting in a line that is sloping upwards. And that's gonna be all of your in-phase material, basically meaning anything that's equal in the left and the right channels. Instead, we're gonna go over to the 180 degrees out of phase. We now have a line that goes in the opposite direction. So for instance, voltage one, as that is increasing, the voltage two is decreasing. So what does this mean? The in-phase material, that is going to basically be things like your kick drums, your snare drums, your lead vocals right up the center. Things, however, that are out of phase, things closer to your synth pads, pianos, possibly hard pan guitars, where they might be similar, but they're going to sound different in both of the channels. So you'll result with more information looking like this. Let's see if we can't get some examples. So let's play a little bit of the track, and I'm going to solo the mids and the sides. So you'll notice I uh, soloed the mids, or basically, rather, muted the sides. And on the goniometer, it is all common information that's in the center, coming up at a straight line. Now, um, we're going to switch over to the side information. Sounds a little bit weird, but this is all the stuff that's happening in the sides. So anything that's different between um, the two channels. So basically, when you play the whole track, it's going to be a combination of that mid signal and that side signal which is really, really cool because now you can see the information that's common to both speakers and things that are not common to both speakers all in one graph. By looking at these curves, you can figure out what's going on and then maybe perhaps choose a tool so you know what to look for in addition to what you're hearing. So by knowing your tools, knowing how to use them and knowing what they do, you're able to produce a better result. On to stereo width. And basically this knob adjusts the level of information that is different between the left and right channels. Let's take a listen as I adjust the overall width. Notice as I turn the knob that the list adjust curves extend even farther on the left and right axis, filling out the goniometer. We can look at the goniometer over here and I'll be adjusting the stereo width over here. Let's start at 100% and then we'll increase the width from there. So that was an example of stereo width. Moving on to the peak and average amplitudes. Think of the radius or distance from the center of the goniometer as a visualization of level, since the graph is plotting the amplitude of the voltages coming from each channel on the left side and the right side. Depending on where the Lissajous curves are forming, you can visualize the peak and average amplitudes and the dynamic contrast in between the two levels. You'll see a consistent form of figures around the center and that'll represent about the average amplitudes of a song. And then the peaks, however, will extend higher as they are a larger voltage. Taking note of the amount of information on the sides versus the middle can help identify out of phase material that could be an issue. I'll be using an outboard compressor to adjust the RMS level of the song so it will sound louder, but watch the center of the goniometer as it starts to move closer to the peak level. You'll also notice on the side, the RMS level will increase from about 13 or so to about 12 or 11, but the main thing to pay attention to is the average level on the center of the goniometer. Let's take a listen. You 
can see that the amount of figures are roughly the same. However, they are now louder. The amplitude of the RMS signal is closer to the peak, narrowing the distance between the peak and the RMS, or the crest factor, and extending the difference between the RMS level and the center of the goniometer. Next, let's talk a little bit about distortion. For this example, we'll be using the Vertigo VSM3. Harmonic distortion has an interesting effect on music, as well as the Lissage's curves. Instead of adding amplitude to a mid or side signal, harmonics add more frequency content to a signal. That frequency content is represented on the goniometer, but differently than RMS or peak. Watch the goniometer as I add in second and third harmonics. You'll notice that the goniometer is fuller, that there are more curves being displayed as more harmonic content is added. More lines need to be drawn in in order to view the effect, thus giving us a fuller image on the goniometer. Next, let's talk about limiting. So as we start to fill out the goniometer, it starts to look like a diamond, and that diamond dictates the upper level of what we can display on the goniometer. Keep in mind that audio is a voltage. This voltage has an upper limit above which clipping or distortion takes place. Let's take a look as we start to add gain into a limiter. As we start pushing the gain into the limiter, you can see a diamond shape forming on the goniometer. This can be an indication of over-limiting, clipping, or added distortion. Take a look at the goniometer on this side to visualize all of the effects we've discussed throughout this process. On this side, you'll notice the original mix and what the Lissages curves look like. Thanks for watching everybody. If you learned something today or like what you saw, please give a like, drop a comment, or feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to reach out via email or social media below. That's all for now, and I'll see you again soon.